to waging war, there's two things you must do. You gotta bring your gun and your amphetamines too. In the Wehrmacht, we ain't got time for fatigue. Cause through the Ardennes, we be bringing the Blitzkrieg. Perverden, it's like a fiend, but way better thanks to Temmler. We can fight in any weather back in Germany. They sell it to our wives, now for Hitler, we're quick to give our lives. What need have we are in of sleep anyway? Now that our invasion of Russia's underway, with Perverden, what can really go bad? Mother, I'll write you when we get to Stalingrad. As we've discussed in our previous video on methamphetamine use by German soldiers and civilians during the Second World War, it wasn't the sole reason for their early success and they didn't use it in every situation. What we didn't cover in that video is that the Germans weren't alone. The soldiers of other belligerent nations, such as Japan, Britain, America and Finland, pepped themselves up with amphetamines and other drugs too. In this video, we're going to discuss what they were putting in their pipes and smoking, so to speak. Long story short, amphetamines were by far the most prevalent drugs used during the war. Like the Germans with Perverden, the Japanese were heavy into methamphetamines. In fact, as we said in our previous video, it was a Japanese chemist by the name of Nagai Nagayoshi who first synthesized the drug in 1893. Also like the Germans, the Japanese fed meth to their soldiers mostly in solid form, under the trade name Pilopin or Hiropin, which was often passed around as Senryoku Zokyozai or drug to inspire the fighting spirits. Between 1939 and 1945, it's estimated that around 1 billion Pilipin pills were manufactured in Japan, and these found their way into the civilian population too. Factory workers would eat them and many were sent to public dispensaries, but a lot of it ended up on the black market and in the hands of criminal organizations like the Yakuza. By 1950, around 5% of Japanese people aged between 18 and 25 were taking meth, many straight to the vein. In 1951, it was banned under the Stimulant Control Law, yet by 1954, some 1 1.5 million people of Japan's 1954 population of 88 million were still meth users. And going back to the war, some kamikaze pilots were injected with liquid meth before they set to the skies, while others simply chased their pill upon pills with seiki. Not to say that it was meth or alcohol that were responsible for what these pilots did. The British weren't so hard, however, opting for the amphetamine benzodrine instead of meth, basically a safer, less intense alternative. Funnily enough, the British, spearheaded by doctors Roland Winfield and Frederick Bartlett, started testing benzodrine on their troops after they discovered pervidin in the pocket of a crashed German pilot in 1940. Mostly, benzodrine was used by the British Royal Air Force, which sanctioned it in tablet and inhalant form in 1942. After this, British medical officers were allowed to dish it out like that one dreadlock guy at every rave, and pilots would gobble it up or inhale it before taking to the skies, as well as shortly before reaching their targets. A few doses were also stowed in their emergency bailout kits in case they crash landed and needed a pick me up to get back to base. Ground troops and naval personnel were using it too. The men of the British 24th Armoured Tank Brigade, for instance, were high on amphetamines when they smashed the Germans and Italians in the Second Battle of El Alamein in 1942, dosing themselves with 20 milligrams at a time, as opposed to the mere 10 milligrams British pilots were taking. The troops had Bernard Montgomery to thank for this, and the British general even conducted tests, such as competitive marches, trench digging and rifle shooting, to emulate how Benzedrin would benefit them in the field. It's safe to say that he was pleased with the results. As with aircraft, the drug was also placed in Navy life rafts to improve survivability in emergency situations. As per the British naval document titled A Guide to Preservation of Life at Sea After Shipwreck, Benzedrin helped to lessen feelings of fatigue and exhaustion, promote alertness, raise the spirits and prolong the will to hang on and live. Throughout the war, the Royal Navy used a total of 28 million tablets all on its own, while some 72 million Benzedrin tablets were issued to the British Armed Forces overall. The British also supplied a further 80 million tablets to the face-munching Americans. 
The Americans scored many of those millions while their army air force was flying out of England out of where they supplied Benzedrine to other American military personnel operating in Africa, Europe, and the Pacific. But that wasn't enough. Throughout the war, American medics supplied their own troops with an additional 80 to 500 million American-made pills as well. In North Africa, for instance, between 100,000 and 500,000 Benzedrine tablets were dished out under one single order made by US General and future President Dwight D. Eisenhower in 1942. So the Yanks were almost certainly cooked alongside their British comrades in that sandy theater of war. Notably, amphetamines did the rounds among US Marines and soldiers in the November 1943 invasion of Tarawa and the D-Day landings. There is also evidence of the Office of Strategic Services including Benzedrine pills in their foreign agents equipment alongside pills that could knock someone out for 6 hours and in a separate bag, a cyanide pill in case an agent fell into enemy hands. All in all, it's estimated that 15% of all US soldiers got on the bennies in World War II, while some 16 million enlistees were at least exposed to it. In the years after the war, Americans continued to use amphetamines quite heavily, with some 3.5 billion tablets being manufactured each year by the late 1950s. During the Korean War, they became standard military issue, and they ran rampant in the Vietnam War as well. While Benzedrine was safer than meth, it wasn't safe, and it wouldn't have been much fun coming off it during a war. As historian James Holland put it, Benzedrine stops you from sleeping, but it doesn't stop you from feeling fatigued. Your body has no chance to recover from the fatigue it's suffering, so there comes a point where you come off the drug and you just collapse. You can't function. The Finns weren't the type to shy away from a bit of drugs either. While they had other substances in their bloodstream prior to World War II, the Germans supplied them with mountains of methamphetamine throughout their short-lived alliance, including some 850,000 pervidin tablets in 1941 alone. This was exactly the substance that Finnish soldier Amo Koivonen was on when he skied 400 kilometers to escape Soviet forces in March 1944. But that's a story for another time. While amphetamines were prevalent, they certainly weren't the only drugs going around. Cocaine snuck its way in, but it was far more popular in the Great War when amphetamines weren't really a thing. Opiates such as heroin circulated too, but they would have had certainly the opposite effect to amphetamines and wouldn't have been much use in exciting soldiers for battle. Certainly more than a joint or two was smoked during the war though, cannabis was also trialed by the Psychological Warfare Branch of the US Military Intelligence Service in October 1942, specifically for the purposes of interrogation. The premise was that relaxed prisoners might be more likely to give up useful information. But what do you think? Did you know the Japanese, British, Americans and Finns were taking amphetamines just like the Germans? Can you think of any other drugs that were used during the war? Do you know of any crazy stories about drugged up soldiers? Should we only share history through rap from now on? Let us know in the comment section below. And just before you run off guys, if you're interested in some more high quality history videos, check out our new YouTube channel called The Braved, where we go back into all different eras to find the most badass men and women of history and talk about them on that channel with high quality edits. So that link is in the description below, along with our Relax Jack music channel, where you can check out the music we use in some of our videos here on the front and use them for your own creative projects and the Patreon, where you can consider donating for access to a behind the scenes discord with myself and my team and a couple of exclusive videos there that you won't find on the YouTube channel. If you just want to join our wider community, check us out on our Facebook, Instagram, and Discord. Anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you learned something new.